Hey everybody, welcome once again to Nose in the Book, a Bible reading commentary with me, your host, Pastor Justin Van Reith. So great to have you with me once again as we take a look at uh, four more chapters from the Word of God. We have uh, before us today uh, Judges chapter 8, Acts chapter 12, Jeremiah chapter 21, and Mark chapter 7. All right, and here's what uh, what we've got before us. In uh, Judges chapter 8, a lot going on here. Uh, Gideon has, um, you know, his army has been reduced to just 300, and he's going after this, this massive army of the Midianites. He goes, he has victory over them, but now he's chasing after Zeba and Zalmunna, the Midianite kings, and they cross the Jordan, and, and, and uh, Gideon is chasing after them, and he comes to the town of Sukkot and, you know, asks for help there. And they say, no, not until you actually stop Zeba and Zalmunna. They don't want to be on the bad side. But uh, Gideon says, well, when I get those guys, I'm going to come back here. I'm going to kill you all. And the same thing happens in another town called Pinio. And so, uh, it's, you know, same thing. And so finally, he catches up to Zeba and Zalmunna and captures them. Uh, he does, in fact, kill them. Nobody will kill them. Gideon must do it himself. And... Um, and then he does go back to the two towns, uh, and he punishes them just as he said. Um, now, after these events, after Gideon uh, delivers the Israelites from their enemy, the people they you know want to make basically uh, you know to, for Gideon to to rule over them, and, and he refuses, but he he has them give them give him these gifts, and he makes this um, th this ephod, and uh, basically to you know summarize. Um, this becomes a uh, an idolatrous issue for the people uh, and for Gideon as well. It says um, they uh, they give Gideon all these gold earrings, and the weight of the gold earrings was forty three pounds and other things. And Gideon made this ephod from the gold, and uh, but soon all the Israelites it says were worshiping it, and it became a trap even for Gideon and his family. Um, and then we read even further that as soon as Gideon died, even though there was 40 years of, of, you know, peace under Gideon's rulership here or judgeship, uh, after Gideon dies right away, the people go back into idolatry. Verse 33, as soon as Gideon died, the Israelites prostituted themselves by worshiping the images of Baal. So, uh, the cycle continues here, even after Gideon. So that's Judges chapter 8. All right, Acts chapter 12. Uh, James, um, who's the um, leader of the church here in Jerusalem, um, or actually this is uh, James John's brother, uh, James, um, you know, uh, uh, um, John, you know, of John and James, um, his, uh, he's killed with the sword, and, uh, and Herod sees um, how much, you know, this pleases the Jewish people that an apostle has been killed, and so he arrests Peter, and he imprisons him, and you know it's a great little scene here because he guards him, and yet uh, Peter escapes from prison. It's miraculous. We read the people are at home; they're praying for Peter, they're praying for his deliverance, and what happens? The, an angel shows up, tells Peter, go ahead, get out of here. And Peter goes to the house of those that are praying for him. And, um, and it says, uh, he knocked at the door in the gate and a servant girl comes open it. She recognizes Peter. She's so overjoyed. Instead of opening, right, just by hearing his voice, she runs back and she says, Peter is standing at the door. And they say, you're out of your mind. Um... When she insisted, they said it must be his angel. Now, Peter keeps knocking, and they finally open the door, and they are amazed. And he motions for them to quiet down and told them how the Lord had led him out of prison. And um, and and you know, this just what what a, what a scene here uh, of how you know the people uh, doubt that what the Lord can can do. It says they were gathered for prayer and the Lord answers their prayer and they are in denial 
And, and I wonder if that speaks to the nature of our prayers as well, that we're willing to come to the Lord to bring the request before him. But do we actually believe that he can and will answer, that he has the power to respond? Um, so uh, going on here, um, uh, after this, uh, Herod uh, Agrippa, uh, he's, you know, the people are just cheering for him. It's the voice of a God and not of a man. And Herod receives this praise. And so he falls down dead. And great verse, verse 24, the word of God continued to spread. And there were many new believers. So God's word continues to win the day. All right, back to the Old Testament, Jeremiah chapter 21. And Babylon is attacking. And so King Zedekiah He's asking the priest, basically saying, please, you know, tell the Lord, hey, Nebuchadnezzar's attacking. Uh, help us. Be gracious to us. Do a mighty miracle as you have done in the past. In the past. Get rid of Nebuchadnezzar. And Jeremiah hears this. And so he sends a reply back to the king, to Zedekiah, and gives more of what Jeremiah has already said. Um, no, it's not going to happen this time. The, the Babylonians are not going to turn around. Nebuchadnezzar's not going to, the Lord is not going to intercede. Uh, this is going to end in judgment for you. No help is coming from the Lord. This is what I've been warning you about. And so your options are basically stay in the city and die or go out to Nebuchadnezzar uh, and go off to exile and at least you'll live. So you're, you're better off surrendering here. There is no hope of victory. So this is Jeremiah chapter uh, 21. And, um, you know, again, just goes to show, you know, with the, um, you know, the people, they wouldn't listen to Jeremiah. He had warned and warned and warned and they refused. And now here's Nebuchadnezzar knocking on the door. Uh, all right. Lastly here, coming to Mark chapter 7. And um, again, as it is with all these chapters in Mark, so much going on here as well. Um, we begin here with um, this uh, the, the another interaction between Jesus and the religious leaders. And you know we've seen them butt heads so many times before, and here we go again. And um, and you know this time they're mad because the disciples of Jesus. Uh, don't follow the Jewish ritual of hand washing before eating. And what Jesus basically argues with them is that they have elevated their traditions and their man-made laws above the word of God. So they're more concerned with these even, you know, ceremonially religious acts that they have invented. Uh, meanwhile, they're not even seeking to keep the word of God, the actual, you know, commands that he gave. And, um, and so Jesus, you know, says, you know, this is wrong. And, 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 and then he goes after the fact of what they were mad about this hand washing issue and says, it's not, it's not what's on the outside, right? They cared so much about the outside, right? Cleaning the outside, but inside, you know, they were dead and, and spiritually dead. And, and, uh, and so Jesus said, you know, it's not what's on the outside. It's not, you know, you have dirty hands and things like that. It's not what defiles someone. It's what's on their heart, what's on the inside. That's where sin lies. That, and so it comes out from the inside. Um, all right, then we get the scene here of a, of a Gentile woman who is just so persistent. She comes to Jesus for uh, healing for her little, uh, for her daughter, and um, to cast this demon out. And initially, you know, Jesus here says, I, you know, I came for the, for the Jews, but her faith is so incredible. She says, even the dogs under the table are allowed to eat the scraps from the children's plates. And he says, good answer. Uh, the demon has left your daughter. I mean, amazing. Jesus just, you know, says the word. Uh, and then we're not done here. Jesus heals a, uh, this deaf man uh, with, with a speech impediment, very common. Um, he, uh, he, he, he gets away from the crowd, because again, he doesn't want this to be all about healing. He's not come just to be a miracle worker, but he's got compassion on this man. He, he spits on his own fingers and touches the man's tongue. And um, looking up to heaven, he sighed. And then he says, be opened. And instantly the man could hear perfectly. His tongue was free. He could speak 
plainly. And again, a great summary verse here. They were completely amazed and said again and again, everything he does is wonderful, right? Everything is awesome that Jesus does here. Um, all right, that's all we have time for today. Again, we had Judges chapter 8 and Gideon chasing Zeba and Zalmunna. Acts chapter 12, uh, death of James, uh, Peter freed from jail, death of Herod, uh, Jeremiah 21, Babylon's attacking, the Lord's not going to help, and Mark chapter 7, a uh, number of things here, Jesus against the religious leaders, uh, what comes out of the heart is what defiles, this faith of a persistent Gentile woman, and also Jesus healing the deaf man. Hope you enjoyed your time in the Lord's Word today. Until next time, keep your eyes on the Lord and your nose in the book. We'll see you again soon.